I'm Nancy McNally with Annie's Creative Studio and today I have such a cute project for you. The name of it is Summer Blooms. It's a table runner by Chris Malone, the one and only. <laughs> it consists of five blocks and each block is 12 by 12 finished, 12 inches by 12 inches finished. And the finished project will be 66 by 15. So now this isn't your typical way to do applique. Ah, that rhymed. <laughs> so why don't you come on and join me? And I think you're really going to like this project. Now, don't forget that you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com Annie's Creative Studio. Like us, come and join in on the fun. Post your pictures, tell us what you're doing. Show us your interpretation of the projects that, you're, that you are piecing with us. So let's gather your supplies. You're gonna need some freezer paper. Now that's part of our applique method. So this applique method actually turns under the edges and we're gonna wrap it around our freezer paper. So you'll see in just a few minutes how that happens. It's a really nice finish. It's not raw edge because you're, you're turning the fabric under the and wrapping it around the freezer paper so you have a finished edge. It gives a very professional look. So the next thing you're gonna need is some spray starch. Now, I chose this brand because it says on the bottom, or on the can, no flaking on dark fabrics, which I thought was kind of important, being that you never know what color fabric you're gonna use in any project. So I thought this would be really, really nice to have. Plus, I wanted something that had a little more body than the typical brand that I've been using. So what you're gonna do, let me grab that again. You're gonna give it a good shake. You're gonna spray it in your cup. Now it's gonna foam up. It's gonna look just like this. And you're gonna let it sit. So go ahead. Get that ready while you're getting your, your supplies ready. So go ahead and spray that into the cup and that way the foam rests. You know, just like when you pour a pop or a Coke or a soda, I'm trying to think of all the different names they call it. Um, and you have to let the fizz go down. We just wanna let the fizz go down because we're gonna use that with a paintbrush. So I've got a, um, like a, a thin bristle brush right here and we're just gonna put it in here and we're gonna paint it on the fabric, but I'll show you more of that method in just a few minutes. So now, you're also gonna need some pinking shears. My pinking shears have a lock on them and I, I really appreciate that. So we're gonna use the pinking shears to cut out our shapes and by using pinking shears, that helps the fabric to fold over the wax paper. So that's gonna be nice. Our wax paper is our petal shapes. Now, if you would like, you can use a rotary blade that has a pinked edge. Did you know they made one? I think I purchased this a really long time ago and I did go back to the store to check and yes, they still make it. The pink, if you will, the shape that you get, here, I'll open that back up. The shape that you get with the rotary blade versus the pinking shears. Here, let's pull these and compare them. Okay, it's a little, it's not quite as deep of a, a pink as a cut, if you will, but it serves the same purpose. So if you'd rather use a rotary blade, then go right ahead. Now, you're also gonna need a smaller rotary blade. Now, you could use a basic, here we go, 45 millimeter blade to go around the curve, but I'm more comfortable using a 28 millimeter to handle those curves nice and easily around the petal that I'm gonna be cutting out, my shape, my applique shape. So I use a 28 millimeter. If you have an 18, go ahead and use the 18, that'll work too. So. On your pattern, page four, here's the two templates that we're gonna be cutting out. So you have your petal and your circle, and you can see you have your petal and your circle. Now, I used 
my 28 millimeter to cut out my petal from the paper. And I tried to use the 28 on the circle, but I couldn't get it to go all the way around to make a nice curve. So I switched to very small scissors. Now these are not fabric scissors. So <laughs> don't tell me, no, don't use those. Yes, I can use these. And because the, the scissors are smaller, I could handle as in the blade smaller, I could handle going around the curve a little easier and it came out more precise. So I, I prefer to do it that way. All right. So now you got to choose your fabrics. I love the fabrics I chose for this. I went to the shop and lo and behold, they just jumped off the shelf and into my bag. And I was like, Oh, they got to go home with me. <laughs> Everybody laughed when they saw that one. <laughs> All right, you're also going to need some hand sewing needles. Now, you will see in this project, this block here, I did machine sew this. I was having a bad day with my arthritis because I have arthritis in my hands. And so I opted to machine sew. But I do have one over here that I'm going to show you how to hand sew because I'm doing okay today. Now, you're going to want to choose thread colors that either match your petals or match the background. Now, most people, when they're doing applique, they want to match the applique shape itself. So like this is blue. You could choose blue thread for that, orange, uh, aqua blue, and yellow so that it doesn't take away from, app from the applique. I actually chose the background fabric color, which is white, to do all of mine in. I just thought it was just fun and whimsical, but please do what you like because it's your project. I encourage creativity. Okay, so now when we go to hand sew, you're gonna need to choose a needle that fits your fingers the best. And don't forget a thimble. I tend to not use a thimble. I know I should. I don't even own one. So if you have one, you're gonna need that with this project but I chose John James 12, size 12 needles. They're very thin, very sharp, and they just go right into the applique shape so easily and so nice. Okay, so our, let me give this a little stir, stirring up the pot here. <laughs> there we go, yeah, it's starting to calm down now. There we go. I'm just gonna leave my paintbrush up here. Now, the next thing I want you con to consider when you are hand sewing these petals to have proper lighting. Oh, you know what? Before we talk about lighting, do you see this little contraption right here? If you've never seen one of these, this is a needle threader and I'll show you how that works in just a little bit, but just a quick one. You'll put your needle in here, eye down, and the thread slides right in here in this little groove right here. And you just push this little lever and there's a little bar in there, a razor, and it, it's not a razor, a little contraption. <laughs> and it pushes the thread right through the eye of the needle so you don't have to thread it. And then if you need to cut your thread, there's a little cutter on it. So that is something that this little needle threader that always stays in my bag. All right, so now back to lighting. Whenever I hand sew and it, I need, I need really good lighting because I want to be able to see what I'm working on. So I found this lamp by Daylight and it's called the Uno lamp. Now I have it on right now. So I'm going to tap the top right here. You can tap this to go on and off and you tap it four times and each tap makes the light brighter. So there's two, three, and four and see how bright it is. And now the fifth one turns it off. It's bendable, it's poseable. So if you have a sewing machine that doesn't have a whole lot of light, you can put this right behind your sewing machine or in front, wherever you like it. And you can take and you can bend this and notice how I'm grabbing this and this light has been on for a while and it's not hot at all. You can pose it this way, any way you need to pose it. Well worth its weight in gold. Ha. Um, I would like to see for a long time, so that's why I chose this light. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out your, your template. Now, if you need to, before you cut out on the paper, 
that's actually the pattern. Go make a copy of it so that you can save this for later if you want to make the project again. That way there's no cuts or anything in it. So cut that out and then your next step, let's go on to that. That is on page one, preparing the petal pieces. So you're going to want to cut out four, excuse me, three four by nine freezer paper sheets. And yes, I have a massive box of freezer paper. We need to use freezer paper, not wax paper and not parchment paper. There's a reason behind this. And I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. All right, so now we have our freezer paper cut out and we need to cut out our templates. So the very first step tells you to cut three from your freezer paper, four by nine sheets. Now we're gonna fuse those together in just a second. But before you do that, on page four, make sure you've already cut out your template, okay? Now if you want, like I said before, go make another copy of this so that you can save this for later in case you only get to do a few at a time. Now this is mine that I've already prepared and this is, <laughs> I'm gonna show you what one looks like. There we go. Isn't that a cool gadget to have? This is what one looks like after you've used it to make like four, five, six of these petals. This is a really neat method. So I really like this. All right, so I'm gonna move my template out of the way. So I've already got these cut out, but I'm gonna show you how we make this. So I have my three freezer papers. We're gonna take one, take two, you're going to put them waxy side down, shiny side. You see how that is shiny and this side is not so shiny. Make sure it's waxy side down and you use your applique pressing sheet, your Teflon sheet. You just apply the heat to it and watch it curl because that's what it does. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. <laughs> I tend to blow on it to make it cool down so I can touch it. Align it, make sure it's shiny side down. Now the heat's still there, so it's sticking already. And what we're creating is a template that will be thick enough that you can cut around it. And you're gonna peel it off your applique pressing sheet. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to take your, which mine's already on here, your template, your petal template that you've cut out, you're gonna place it right on here, and that's when you're going to use your rotary blade to cut that out. So you're gonna to need to make several of these because there's 20 petals total, so that's four per block, so you're making five blocks. So go ahead and get that done, that way you've got them prepared because you can usually make four to five petals with one freezer paper trio. That way you've just got them all made and ready to go. All right, I'm going to put the iron to this. Give it a little heat so it stays nice and together. Now your next step is you're gonna take your fabric for your petals. You're gonna cut it the same size as you did the freezer paper. You're gonna place it on shiny side down to the wrong side of the fabric. Make sure that when you place it on the fabric that you've got plenty of room from the tip all the way around the sides. You don't wanna place it over here by the edge because we're gonna cut it out, but we're gonna give the seam allowance at this point. So. I center it so that I can have plenty at the tip, both tips and all the way around. And it's really simple. Take your iron, let the iron do its work. You don't have to press, you have to put a lot of weight to it. It'll do it immediately. And I also flip it over and do it one more time, just in case any wrinkles or folds happen, because you can get those out immediately. All right, so our next step is we're gonna take our pinking shears. All right, so now let's look, make sure this is cold. <laughs> so let's look at step four. Now we're going to cut out our petal shape. 
So you're going to cut out about a quarter of an inch away. And you don't want to go too small because you have to have enough that's going to wrap up and over your wax paper trio. So can you see the difference? This is the rotary blade side and this is the scissor side. So there is a little bit of a difference. You can see that the, the pinking is kind of, it's more curved with the rotary blade where the pinking shears are more sharper and more defined. All right, this is a, such a cool step. All right, so let's move on to our next step, which is step five. So you're gonna take your iron and you're gonna use, I'm not gonna touch it. You're gonna use the tip of your iron to help bring the fabric up and over your freezer paper template. See how I just pulled it over with my fingers? I'm going to start coaxing it over. And we're doing this because we want to start telling the fabric which direction it's going to go in. Because we're working on the bias. Okay, so we're going to do one side at a time. So once you do this side, now, now we get to use the starch. And notice all the fizz has gone away. Let me bring this a little closer to me so I can reach it. Now you're going to take, can you see the crease right here? Here, let's pull this a little closer. Can you see that crease right there? You're just going to paint that crease with the starch. And you can be generous. You don't have to worry about it. It's, it's not, remember, the spray can said it's not going to flake. It's not going to leave flake marks or anything like that. So you're going to paint it with the starch. All the way to the end. And then you're going to take the iron back to it again. And use the tip of the iron to press the fabric onto your freezer, freezer paper trio. You might hear it sizzle a little bit, but that's okay. I just keep telling the fabric which direction it's supposed to be going. Now, can you see it's got this nice clean edge right here? I love it. All right, so now we're gonna repeat the process and we're going to use the iron and we're gonna push this side up and over the freezer paper. So now, let's before we move on, let's look at our tips the tip of the petal. So let's turn the page. On step seven, if the tip extends past, like you've cut too much fabric, you've left too much of a seam allowance, this is where that will happen. If you look on, on figure four in your pattern, it'll show you how to, now mine's doing okay, but let's pretend it's not. It will show you how to fold this in and then this will come over and this will come over. But I don't have an excess amount of fabric, so mine's folding over really nice. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So if it doesn't make that nice pretty point, that's what you get. That's all you need to do. So let's repeat the process. So once you have completed your petal, you're going to repeat the steps three through eight to finish all 20 of them. Now once you get to where your seam allowance is pressed under. Aren't they cute? Our next step is you're gonna open it up just a little bit and you're gonna pull this shape out. And then you're gonna use it again on the next one. Now, if you need to, go ahead and give it a press again, just in case the seam allowance has unfolded a little bit too much. Our next one is 
our circle. So we want to prepare our circle template. Now we're not going to use our spray starch for this one. So what you're going to do, make sure you've cut out your circle and you're going to take a piece of fabric. Now we are on preparing the circle pieces on page three. So you're going to take your fabric, go right sides together, and you're gonna, we're gonna trace it on the wrong side, first of all. And then you're gonna take your fabric, you're gonna fold it so that you have right sides together and you have a piece of batting on the back. All right, so you're going to trace, make sure you pin, hold it in place, fold it all together, make your little sandwich, and then you're going to sew directly on your marks. So I'm gonna put my needle right here. Now you can see I've already done these two over here. So let's do this one. I'm gonna drop my foot right on that line. So I've got the center mark there, put my needle right where it needs to go. Now, when you are stitching on a circle, you want to go, depending on your machine, you want to go two to three, not two, three to five stitches, maybe two, but three to five stitches and stop. And you want to pivot. So if you have the pivot feature on your sewing machine, go ahead and set that. Pivot feature is where when you're sewing and you lift your foot off the uh, foot pedal, your presser foot will automatically lift and the needle will stay down. This machine does not have that feature, but if you have that, go ahead and set it, it'll save your time. Or if you have a knee lift, use your knee lift on this feature or this part of the sewing. So we're gonna go one, there we go, and I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna pivot just a little bit. Now you keep your eye. What I do is I watch that center mark that's on my foot and I keep that center mark because I have a clear foot right here, a clear plastic piece. I can watch where my circle marking is and make sure it's landing on that center piece. So I'm staying aligned. And as soon as you start coming off the line, just stop sewing, needle down. If you can set your machine for needle down, set it for needle down. Okay, I think you get the idea when you get all the way back around where you started, then you're gonna wanna lock your stitches, go in reverse, go backwards a couple stitches, and then come forward a couple stitches. So now our next step will be, we have to cut our circles out. So that is step three. It says cut out each circle about an eighth of an inch from the seam using the pinking shears. Now, I will suggest you use the pinking shears. This blade, I believe, is too big to get around this arc with the pinking. All right, don't forget, you have to make a total of five of those. So you're gonna have to separate the top fabric from the bottom fabric and the batting. You want the bottom fabric and the batting to pull apart, pull away from the top so that you can cut a slip. A slit, not a slip. <laughs> All right, just cut a little slit just like that. Cut a little ways this way. It only has to be enough so we can turn it right side out, that's all. You're gonna take and you're gonna push it out. And if you need to make your slit a little bit bigger, it's okay. You can cut an X in it if you want. And it's forming. There we go. All right, so I'm going to use the end of my tweezers. See how it's round right here? I don't have a turning tool. So I'm gonna use the end of my tweezers. I'm gonna stick it in here. And I'm going to put it right in that seam and let it float around, push it around, just like this. The curve, you can use anything that you want that has a, a nice curve end here to push that out. Isn't it cute? Cute, cute, cute. Okay, let's put these away. So now we've prepared our pieces. All right. So our next step 
is I have my a square. So if you go back to the first page, our a square is a six and a half inch square. You're going to take and you're going to fold just like this. And you're going to mark it. And the reason we're doing this is so that we can find center. I like to do it both ways. You can finger press or you can use your iron. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever you find easiest. Okay, see, now I can do this. Now I'm gonna take my, my petal. I'm also gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna pinch it right here in the middle and then take those crease pinch pleats, pinch marks, and align it up so I can line these on this crease and the points up here. And they, the points should point directly to, the tip should point directly to the corners. All right, so our next step is now we need to pin these in place. Make sure that when you align your petal to your fabric, your background square, that you have a quarter inch from that tip on both sides, over here also, so that when we sew these together, that you have your seam allowance. Okay, so now we're gonna hand sew. So I'm gonna show you. I've actually chosen a little bit longer of a needle so that you can see it. You don't need to double your thread is what I'm trying to say. There we go. If you like that look, go right ahead and have two strands going through, but you, you don't need to, you can do one. So now we're gonna make our knot. You can start by putting the knot on the back. If you come in here, if I started the knot here, then you've got a little bump in here. This way, putting the knot by coming through the back, the background fabric, the knot will get buried into the batting and it has a little softer place to land. Now, if I had batting here, that would be different, but we'll have batting there once we go to quilt it. So I'm gonna pull it up through here. Now, can you see how I'm like right on the edge of the petal? That's what you want to do. So it's kind of like we're hiding the stitch. Now I'm using white thread so that you can see, but you would want to use um, the color that matches or you can use white, you can use whatever if you want your stitches to show, but generally we hide our stitches. So we're gonna, we come right up in that edge. There we go. And then we're gonna come down, you go right along the edge, you're gonna pick a thread. Whoops, I missed. <laughs> if I had a thimble on, I wouldn't get my finger. Now, if you angle your needle, there we go, too much, too far of an angle, you'll, you'll go too far down your shape. So that is something that the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. So we're gonna pull it through. There we go. And you just give it a little tug and see how the stitches are kind of hidden. Now let's come back in here. Prick your finger. Whoops, I missed. There we go. Actually, let me get it a little bit further deeper onto the side. There, that's a little bit better. And you're gonna work your way all the way around. Now, when you get to the tip, you're gonna want to, let me see if I'm, I, I will restart one so that you can see what we need to do at the tip. Let me pull the knot up in here and I'm gonna come right along the tip here. 
Oops, I missed. There we go. So the idea is you want to make sure that needle captures the tip and the thread and it, it, it meets it. Let's go back down in here. I'm almost to the tip. There we go. Okay, can you see I'm right there at the tip? Once we get to the tip, you're going to go directly down because you want to secure that tip. There we go. And if you need to do it again, go ahead and do another stitch there so that you can hide it and make that tip look nice and crisp. But I think you get the idea. You're going to bring your needle up a couple times if you need to to make that tip nice and crisp and make it look like a pretty point. And then you can continue working all the way around. If you cannot hand sew and you need to machine applique this, your next step would be to get fusible and you're going to cut the fusible from your template piece. Just cut it out the exact same size as your template. You don't need to give it seam allowance. Okay, so you're going to do that. And then on the back of it, what I use is a stabilizer. Now, if you're into embroidery, this is totally optional. If you're into embroidery, you're going to want to use a stabilizer on the back. I always do when I do applique. And this is a, this is a tearaway embroidery stabilizer. It's not permanent. As soon as you finish machine sewing it down, you just literally tear it off the back and it just gives your applique pieces body. So what you're going to do, is you'll take your fusible, cut it out the same shape as your petal. You fuse it onto the back of your petal. And then when you fuse the whole petal to your background square, you're going to line it just like we did before. Then take a piece of stabilizer and the stabilizer goes on the back of your square and you do the glue side to your square. And I will show you, you can see where I've pulled the paper away from it all along in here. See here's some paper right in here and it's not permanent. You can just pull it and it comes right off just like that. That gives you the stability that you need so that when you're machine applicating these pieces down and you're using whatever stitch you want to use that it will, um, that your background square will not get little pleats or look uneven. Like we started out with a six and a half inch square and then after you've machine applicated it down and then it looks kind of wavy, the stabilizer won't allow it to do that. So once you've finished applicating, applique stitching it down, then you're going to flip it over. You're going to tear it off from around here and off from the back. It's that simple. You can do that while you watch TV. So our next step would be to sew. Now this one I've, I have actually fused. I'm going to show you. I haven't stitched it down yet, but I fused this piece down and then I have the embroidery uh, stabilizer on the back. So choose whatever stitch you want. Just like I said before, you're going to go needle down right along the edge and you're going to do your favorite stitch. Okay, so we're going to try this. We're going to just machine stitch a little bit down here and see how it works. Now, whenever I'm machine appliqueing down my applique pieces, there's a variety of stitches that you can use. I always stitch it out slowly first and I count and I go, sometimes it'll go forward two stitches and then it'll take the bite over and then it come back. And sometimes it'll stitch one stitch and then go back and then one stitch again forward and then over. So whichever one you choose, practice on a, a, a fabric piece first and then stitch it and always count always watch so that you can keep up with it so when we go to join these blocks together you're going to go just like this you're going to put your petals to the center and go this way 
and then you would join the other two. So that shows you on step five how to do that. So you're going to make, this is your top, and the bottom is basically the same way. You're just going to rotate it. So you're going to sew these together. Now, you can either choose to press left or right your top row, and whatever you press your top row direction to, you're going to press your bottom row in the opposite direction, or you can press open. It's strictly up to you. Once you get the top and the bottom row together, then you're going to join them to make the entire block. And then your last step is to put on your center cir circle, which is so, so cute. Now again, you have the option to hand sew it down or you can machine sew your Summer Blooms center block. I just think this is so cute. I fell in love with it. Look at the bottom diagram. So your corner unit is going to have your corner square, a sashing piece, or framing, or a border piece, and then another one's going to go on the top, okay? So that's your two corners. So you get two border pieces and a corner. Now, your pieces in between, you're going to alternate whether your border piece goes on the bottom or the top. So it can go here or it can go there. And don't forget, you can turn your block to make it look the way you want. You're going to join them all in a row. Put your backing and your batting together and bind it and you are done. This project is so cute. Thank you so much, Chris Malone, for designing such a cute summer quilt. All right, everybody, I'll see you next time.